Put my name in all my books. <laughs> There's Dr. Seuss. This ain't Dr. Right. Seuss. Dr. Muse. Mm-hmm. No. Speak to all right. I'm going to share this. I want to share this. Mm-hmm. All right. This chapter, and I can't hardly see. This chapter shall be recited by a man who is ceremonially clean and pure, who have not eaten the flesh of animals or fish, who have not had intercourse with women, and behold, thou shalt make a scarab of green stone with a rim plated with gold, which shall be placed in the heart of man, and it shall perform for him the opening of the mouth, and thou shalt anoint it, and thou shalt recite over it enchantments. I just found that interesting. Mm-hmm. Yes, that sounds a lot like that scarab, man. Mm-hmm. It, and that's the scarab is um, it, it's supposed to replace the heart, and the, the heart is symbolic of your conscious. Mm-hmm. So that's, yeah. and that's what it was doing. It was weighing the souls. The the heart it was like, see if your heart is pure and what your soul says, and that was what his scales, the scales um, on, uh... were on his wrist were doing. It was supposed to be weighing the person's soul and what it's done past, present, and future, and What's whether or not they were worthy. Oh, damn it. Now you're going to grab the fuck up. You what always deal with the names. Oh, I shit. know. The dude was Arthur. Yeah. I'm talking about the Arthur. dude with the scales the, on the, his with wrist? With the scales on his wrist with Arthur. Yeah. yeah. That's Arthur. And he's playing some other character, too. Yeah, I'm not sure what I know. I don't know the lore by heart yet. Yeah. I haven't done we 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 started watching a little bit of new rock stars to try to get up on up to speed on like who's who and what's what. I don't think any of it sunk in. It was nap time. Oh yeah, he knocked out during it. <laughs> so it, it was yeah. me watching, yeah, but yet. all good. Oh so well, yeah. Oh, no, yeah, we, no, uh, oh we should probably do the thing, man. Oh yeah. Oh. This is an episode. This is okay. I mean, it is possibly, quite possibly. Let's, let's see if uh, how we feel about it, man. Okay. Uh, practice. Well, edit. Yeah, practice. <laughs> see ya. <laughs> Zone pitchfork yeah. at it again. Shit. Yeah, Zone pitchfork at it again. <laughs> Hit subscribe. Hit like. Hit like. Right. Dislike. Hit a comment. Hit a comment. Um, we share. appreciate the support. Oh, definitely the share part too. Share that gets oh, you. Yeah, please share. That gets us yeah, back. the algorithm too. Yeah, don't don't come up to me in person and be like, "Man, I love what you're doing." Uh, 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 don't do that. Share it. Proof. Mm-hmm. Like, show me that you you like it. Share it. Yeah, man. Definitely. Yeah. That way we can keep doing it. Word. Um. Yeah, we were like we in a, in a dream space or something like that. I don't know, right? Some real life. Lotus Lounge. Yeah. It goes with the the topic because yeah. I'm 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 ready to get into this. So all right, let's get into it. All right, so we well, let's tell them what we're doing and what was going on. So we oh, give yeah. a little uh, introduction to what what's going on here. We do, it's kind of like a collab or something like that, right? So yeah, it's a Marvel moment. Uh, we got us. so we got to introduce if it's his old pitchfork thing. If it ends yeah. up going out on his old pitchfork, we got to introduce if it goes out on Panda Pair. We got to introduce. Oh, yeah. So it's his own pitchfork. His own pitchfork. Yeah. Okay, so it's his own pitchfork thing. Guest starring Yanni, my lady. Yes, my the mom. moderator. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, moderator. Like I already told you, like in the future, I see it like when we have the office and the studio and all that. Like I can see it being like you know Yanni is like the. It would be the moderator. Like she'll have the questions. We'll, you know, I could see that. I could see that. Yeah, I, she, I could just see that's the like first take. You know, like Molly and <laughs> she's a visionary in so many ways. A lot of things that happen happen because she sees them or she sees a vision for them. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's the moder- She'll know how to moderate because a lot of them, the things that we'll be doing will be her ideas or extension of her ideas or she'll be helping us map out and actually bring our ideas to life that's one thing she does well for me is i'll, I'll give her an idea and since she has background and training and in, in dealing with theater and sets and stuff like that and costume and fashion she can usually help 
me understand how to take something out of my brain and make it into something we can put on film. So, support, support. Yeah, definitely moderator. Um, Vin's here too. Y'all can't see him, but he's I see him. He, he's pushing. If the two of us is somewhere, he's not far behind. He's he's somewhere near frame. Mm-hmm. If that's the case. But um, yeah, so it's on Pitchfork. We uh we guest star Yanni. We are watching Marvel's Moon Knight. Moon Knight, uh, I'm a big Marvel buff and have been for a while. I usually know my shit when it comes to Marvel. Yeah. Moon Knight is one of those characters and, and one of those things I don't know much of. So I thought it would be fun to kind of watch it with very little research and background because usually I do my deep dives to try and get a feel for what's going on in the in the movie or the show if it's a Marvel thing. So this one I'm kind of flying blind for the most part with a little bit of a little bit of hand holding from new rock stars after the episodes. We'll probably watch the break house. Um but that's about it. I fell asleep during today's break breakdown. We're about to go over episode one. Yeah. Um, Zoe is watching with us because he's gonna make this a lot more interesting and a lot more entertaining. He's into sure. good cinema and film like we are. And since a whole lot of film and cinema has been being morphed into television, we are all taking part in and enjoying that. Yeah. Support, support, support. And yes. He's bringing something very interesting to the table. As you can see, we got the text. Mm-hmm. He's got the ancient scrolls up on his table. Nah, man. Y'all said let's watch it, so I watched it, and I just I just took notes, and I, yeah, you know, I'm I'm lost, but I I have an I have an opinion, and I have a you know an idea, so yeah, I'm willing to talk about that. And, let's do it. And uh, one other thing about Zoe, because uh, you know it's a kind of a special day for him. He got one of his uh, comments posted on. Uh, uh, by the account of one of his favorite shows, uh, Servant, man. So shout out Servant. to Servant, man. Yeah. Shout out to Servant. Shout out to uh, Tiger Freak. Shout out to Dorothy. That's my show. <laughs> What's your girl's name, Leanne? Leanne, man. I love that character. Um, I just love her transition because she started the show so naive. And now she's like in control, man. And it's like, it's your perception. It's like, she could be evil. She could be good. You don't know. You should be nice to her though. <laughs> yeah, I love Leanne, man. Yeah, I can't wait for us to get in there. Uh, we're, we're gonna follow suit and kind of jump into his, into his uh, servant world too and get a feel for his show um, mm-hmm. soon. So I guess this is our first uh, run at watching something together and trying to, uh, Mm-hmm. Recap. So yeah, I, as you guys said, I guess we can get in now. So I just want to give a little background for anybody jumping on, man. I understand what we about to get into. Got you. I got you. So who wants to go first? Tell me what y'all think. What you think? The fact that they said also their the music that they used to score this definitely went hand in hand with everything that was going on. And yes, that's typically what you do in a movie or a show. But even down to Moon Knight, the the, lyr- the lyrics following being led by the moon being in the first song that played as the show started, it was just like, okay, set up. I I, I appreciate that. I see that. I see that. The first song was lo- right. It was what. Wasn't it uh, Wake Me Up still? Mm-mm. No. That was in the middle. That was in the middle. Yeah. That was during the chase. Yeah. That's, I thought that was the clue. I thought that was a clue. Like, yeah. Wake Me Up, I think the chase, I I don't know. Can I say that already? Can I say what yeah, I think? We already? go bounce around. We don't have to go top to bottom. That was just yeah. the first thing that stood out to me was the fact that they even got, found a song that had something about the moon and at night and being guided by the moon, like in the lyrics to open the show. I just thought that was interesting. But yeah, we don't have to go top to bottom. We could zigzag. We don't know what the opening song is though. Oh, now you're gonna go find it because he he does have. Um, some. I'm, I'm itching to go into that. The place. one. When um good everybody I wake up every day I wake up, dun dun dun, cause it was a song it was one different song playing when Arthur was on. Yeah. But then when when the the guy, I don't know if he's Mark or Stephen. I don't know who yeah, he Stephen's is. Yeah, Stephen's the one who's like always confused when everything comes back. Mark is the one that's the mercenary. So he's okay. like the Bruce Banner in this case, I guess. He's the mild man. But see. So. 
Do y'all think it's just two? Because I'm thinking it's more. I think, think so. it's, I think it's more, and it hinted at in there that there could potential. I think somewhere in the show it hinted that there could be more than just those two and then how they kept showing us the fractured glass and like in the main the last part where they showed us fractured glass there was three and almost looked like a fourth so i think at least there's three i think it's mark i think it's steven and then the um moon knight the god itself oh so you think oh so you think because i think the god was the one we kept hearing talk saying the idiots awake or the worms driving and that's why I think we were hearing the deity mm. talking inside of him, as well as Mark, who was the one that the deity selected to be the, the host. But then Steven was the other personality when he's like, he's the worm because Mark is the personality that the deity had selected to be his his his, the, host, his host and partner. Yeah. Yeah, and I wonder if the deity selected it, not knowing that this person had a, a dual personality or a split mm. personality disorder or something like that. I forget what it's called, but maybe Let, it's disassociative yeah, the, um, personality the, disorder. Yeah. And what I think, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what I think. I think, I think he is the mercenary. I think that's who he is. And I think the other people are the the personalities he creates to deal with that trauma of being mm-hmm. a mercenary. I think he does that to block it out. I don't know. Yeah. So but I'm just, mercenary might be the primary identity. I think that is the primary identity. Wow. Okay. And I think everybody else is just to to deal with that, that tough job. That's crazy. You know, I, I've got um, a few Moon Knight comments that I've read as a, as a kid. I don't remember anything about the right. multiple identity disorder. I think I was just all wrapped up in the costume and I think I was more paying attention to the artwork than I was the storylines. I don't remember any of this, but mm-hmm. That said, if, if people are watching this for the first time and they, they don't know anything about Moon Knight, maybe we should give a quick synopsis of the show. Remember there was a um a rundown like a, of the episode? Yeah, like a quick one liner. Do, do we have uh, access to that real quick? Yeah. Is that easy to grab real quick? It was, yeah, it's a what? It's a guy. I forgot. Yeah, it's like a couple sentences. Yeah, mm-hmm. what, what, and maybe we'll give back while while she's looking that up. Maybe we can give a, a little background on the setting. What, what, where is this taking place? Do you guys know? I this? think it's supposed to be somewhere in the UK, even though most of it was filmed like all over the world. But I think it's supposed to take place somewhere in the UK. Wow, well, so we got. Yeah, our- I saw the French Alps. Yeah, so I saw France. I yeah. saw. Because I think that's the museum he's supposed to be working in is the British Museum of something rather. Mm-hmm. And he works in the gift shop. Yeah, of that museum. So this is different mm-hmm. already. This is the first Marvel uh, movie that's taking place with somebody who wasn't American or African or Asian. This is the first UK expansion of the Marvel Universe. Kind of telling a story that's set there by people who live there. Everything else is no- normally American, so that's a that's a different twist. And if one thing I noticed early in the week that's uh, probably important to note here is uh, it's the same week they start announcing news about Henry Cavill being uh, Captain Britain and Captain Britain coming to the MCU as well. So mm. this this scene this se- series may be opening up the door for a new little arm of the MCU to start being developed or the new branch to start being developed here. I'm sure. I'm sure. A nugget I thought was interesting while I was, you know, doing my little poking around uh, backstory is that Marvel's taking a different path because in the comics, he doesn't actually work at a museum. This is all like modern day Marvel's creation, but that when the comic originally came out, people actually compared his likeness to Bruce Wayne, Batman, because Mark was at Mark Grant was actually a filthy rich billionaire who and that was part of how he was able to cover up all his mercenary mess was because he was a highfalutin like mm. high society man and so they okay. think that Marvel made this new iteration of Steven being the main character and working at a museum to move that light away from it seeming to lean towards Toward DC Batman esque wow. character. That's dope. Wow. Okay. That's a okay. good uh, story on his head too, because that makes sense. Because he, he 
he did seem, I, I do kind of remember more something like that, like it, the comic feeling more like some Batman type stuff, mm -hmm. like being very wordy. And when it was action, it was it was just real swift fighting action, like a Batman fight. So that's, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. That's dope. Um, what did, what did, oh. No, go ahead. I was gonna say, what did y'all think about the sand around the bed? I thought that was interesting. Um, I thought one, it could be a tie to his whole affinity for Egypt and the sand, like, you know, the sands of Egypt. But also I think that was just another one of his like fail safes to try to figure out whether or not his other personality woke up. I think that's what all the locks on the door were for, the tape. I think that's what the ankle brace was for, or just like all sorts of fail safes for him to know whether or not he woke up as his alternate self. Um, to do some of the, the chaos. But the other thing I was thinking about was that if his alternate self did wake up, Mark seems to be intelligent. Who's to say Mark didn't just put all those things back in place after he did what he did? The fish, mm -hmm. the goldfish right. with two fins. Yes, right, replacing the goldfish. Replacing the goldfish. And the lady saying, what, what do you mean? Like you were here yesterday. And he was like, no, I wasn't. And she was like, okay, right. That's what I want to talk about. The time, the time when the time too, that space and time thing. Like, mm -hmm. is he traveling? Like, is he losing time? Like, that's like, I'm thinking- I think he, he can't tell the time because when Mark's in control, like how the, the deity uh, was saying, oh man, he's back awake and it's almost like they're passengers when Steven's awake. I think Steven may be similar, like a passenger or just completely unconscious when Mark and the deity are um, are running things. I wonder- Because he always wakes up confused and how, how he was like, wait, where am I? Like, when he woke up by the Alps, he was like, uh, 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 where am I? What's going on? What happened? Why is this in my pocket? Like he's completely oblivious to everything. So I think that's how time jumps for him is he has no like tangible awareness of it when the other two are driving. I wonder if Mark even knows when Steven is driving. I wonder if neither one of them knows what's going on, but the deity always knows what's going on in both mm. lives. But maybe he's explained it to Mark and him and Mark have a rapport about it, whereas him and Steven don't have one. Right, because uh, Mark is the one that he chose, one that yeah. the deity chose. Except yeah. for at the end when Mark says, yo, come on, give me the wheel. Yeah. But do y'all think he can die? Like, because when he woke up, his jaw seemed to be broke. Remember one time? Yeah, because he was shifted off. Yeah. Because it was like he jumped out, or Mark jumped out the window, but then Steven, well, it was like the impact woke Steven up instead of Mark staying wow. in control. Or at least that's what I got from it. Yeah. yeah. I got that. He's lonely. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Definitely that, man. That's also thought it was interesting. Steven's a vegan and Mark is not. Cause that yeah. it's like Mark made the arrangements to have the date with the woman and Steven didn't. Cause mm -hmm. Steven was like, what? And then his boss was like, what's a vegan gonna eat at a steakhouse? It's like, mm -hmm. I don't know, salad, bread. Yeah. He just, yeah, he, that song that was playing too, it was like, lonely as a man without love. I, like those, that, those lyrics in that song, man. I was like, man, that thing is cold right here, yo. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's powerful. And I thought, did y'all notice when he fell asleep on the bus? Yes, I thought, and, man, and woke up, just woke up on the bus and he was like, what the oh, fuck? And, yeah. yeah, and what's his name was on there? Oh, Arthur, yeah, Arthur was, was on, on the there. bus, yeah. yeah. I think when he goes out and falls asleep, that's a problem. And that's what he said at the beginning. He was like, and through all those times where they show us the like the and the automated Siri sound, sounding voice talking to him, it's like how to stay awake, keep the mind awake, you know, play a game, read a book, and then it kept repeating itself. Yeah, I think that's part of it. Is like if Steve, if one of if one of the identities falls asleep, another one can wake up. Is what I kind of gathered from it. Cause Steven fell asleep, Ooh. Mark seemed to woke have awakened, and then on the bus when he jolted awake, Steven woke back up. So it seems like right. sleep Steve is where the personalities can swap over, and whichever one 
who knows how whichever first. one go, gets to go gets to decide which one's waking up. That's an interesting thought. Yeah. Whoever, whoever gets to the door first. Right. So, what do you think about when when the guy came up to him? Because this the, that's the only part I didn't I didn't really have an opinion or understanding on when Arthur came up to him in the museum and he was trying to run away and one of the workers was like praise Ahmed mm-hmm. and um and then he grabbed um, my man's arms and then he was like he said you have chaos in you I think the scales didn't balance either way I think they just kept I think they just kept going because I think Stephen really is genuine the Stephen personality is wholesome and harmless but because there's more than just one existing within him i think the scales couldn't go either way because steven's wholesome mark isn't but then i think also the fact that another deity is involved i was wondering if the 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 deity they serve couldn't judge the other deity that was also present since mark personality seems to be tired tied with the conshu moon deity so you think Arthur, Arthur is one, and then... I think Arthur's um, tied to the deity. Who, I think that's why he's doing everything is because he's serving, um, which deity? The one Amit. with, yeah, Amit. I think he's, I think he, like, Mark is tied to Kansu, the moon deity. I think he's tied to Amit. And mm. doing Amit. Because when the, when the, um when the woman came up to him at the beginning, well, not at the beginning, but when they he were, they were in that town, uh, he, she said, Amit, please judge me. And he said, no, call me Arthur. I'm just doing the bidding. Hmm. So it seems like he may have, t- he and his following may have tied themselves to Amit and doing the work of Amit. Cause he was still able to drain the life force out of the woman when the scales Pointed downward and imbalanced. Everybody oh, was cool with that too. Yeah, and everybody just let it happen. Nobody got freaked out. Nobody flinched. And she. Now had, that part was weird to me too. Yeah, because she was like, she was like, I've never done anything bad. And he said, Ahmed knows all, past, present, and future. So maybe it's something you, you have not done yet. But Ahmed has weighed your soul. See, this is why I watch for her. She. <laughs> She locks in and remembers all these little things that kicked my memory in the gear. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta watch it again now. And and okay. can you even weigh the soul of a deity? Does a deity have and that's, a soul? And that's like, why I think the scales didn't balance. I think that's why the scales didn't balance yeah, for Steven because I think Steven's wholesome, but because Mark is tied to the moon god um Kansu, I think that was part of the reason why. I think that was part of the reason why the scales couldn't balance because can one God judge and decide life and death of another deity? Um, So I was wondering if that's why he was just like, there's chaos within you because there's literally so much bound within Steven that... And also the fact that Arthur recognized the body of Steven but called him as the mercenary. So they run into each other before, because when he came forward and he was like, yeah. "Is the guy still here?" and they were like, "We believe so," and he called out whatever chant, and everybody bowed down except for Stephen. He was and like, he, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah," and he was like, Arthur said, "Well, you know," he was like, "It's you, you mercenary," and he was like, "No, no, not a mercenary. I'm Stephen. Work at a museum." So clearly, Arthur has had a run in with. Yeah, a violent oh. run in too. Right. Mm-hmm. So yeah. clearly there's some type of something. There's so much that they, some of these seeds they planted, man. We, we, yeah. We're about to be in for it. Yeah. Yeah, I love that he works in the gift shop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that the lady, his boss is so cruel, like crushed all, yeah. crushing all of his dreams. I was like, yo, she did a great job playing her role. Cause even I was like, oh, I can tell you a character. I am not gonna like, like ma'am, just crush this man's whole heart. He was like, well, yeah. that was mean. <laughs> and he, yeah, that guy, he's playing it well. He, he, mm-hmm. He's playing that part very well. 
after that lady heard about the date uh, or heard that he had the date, what did she say about him? She's like, oh, I guess you kind of, like she just see something in him after that. Yeah, but then when he said, uh, she was like, what are you gonna eat at a steakhouse? And he was like, I don't know. And she was just like, oh yeah, what the pick you are? And like went back to just disrespecting him. Mm -hmm. It's like, yo. Like she she had, she had was enamored with him for a quick minute. Like, oh, maybe not so bad. And it was like, yeah. nah, never mind, never mind. Exactly. Again, it, it, pure, pure persuasion. That was a perfect example of pure persuasion because she clearly thought that mm -hmm. Shorty he was going on a date with was hot and was like, oh, if she sees something in him, maybe I missed something. But then he continued to be himself and was like, oh, never mind. Like, yep. I didn't, whatever she sees, I don't see. Like, it ain't there. She didn't see the mark. I felt so bad for him mm -hmm. when my man started crying. Like, when he ordered the steak, Mm -hmm. I, I, that that part got to me, and then me when too. he was walking and talk, I guess he's talking to his mom or somebody. He mm -hmm. threw the flowers and like, yeah, we, I'm gonna, we gonna bring her by the house. And I also have thoughts about that he's not actually talking to his mom because it always seems like at the end he's almost talking to a voicemail. And so it's like, who is he leaving these voicemails to? Because then at the beginning of that, the, in the first call he's having when he's getting on the bus at the beginning of the show, he's like, yeah, sorry I missed you again. Couldn't catch you. Talk to you later. I'll try to catch you later. And then something he says at the end of this one too, it makes it seem like he's not actually on the phone with talk anyone, with, with the person. actual live person. You don't, you don't hear a conversation taking place. Right, right. like you don't hear it. somebody else on the other end of the line. And then it always seems like when he's closing off, he's signing off, but no one's saying anything. And it's almost like he's leaving a voice message from someone for someone versus actually having a conversation. And then something that I peep that they talked about in New Rockstars was that he works in the gift shop and every morning that they showed him walking in, he passes a rack of postcards. And she was wondering if Mark is sending Steven these postcards to keep him like dummied out. Like if Mark or the deity in the other personality is sending him his self postcards to keep him just in to this loop the, and the cycle mother. and not you know, trying to figure, not getting messy and trying to figure stuff out. Cause like the deity says, every time Steven's awake, he's like, go back to sleep, give us the body. Like you fucking shit up. Mm -hmm. I wonder. Interesting. I'm, I'm gonna watch it again tonight. Um, yeah. What do, you, what do you think about Layla? The, 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 the cell phone, the one that, mm -hmm. you know, she kept calling the phone. What do you think about that? Who is that? I think that's somebody who's like a relationship that maybe Mark Mark had or has because it's like you disappeared for several months and she she said Mark and he was like who's Mark and she, that's when she was got quiet and was like what are you talking about well remember the one liner about the show what does it say uh, again pull it up real quick oh yeah because it says he's a mercenary uh if he's a mercenary you have to have somebody who's giving you assignments or who's paying you for your jobs well but i what i was also gonna say was there was one other name other than layla in there right but there was only in there one time yeah but what new rockstar said was that that one name in the comics is actually like a, a close counter to jack duquesne and is actually a, a another known mercenary mm. Okay, so what the little brief okay. clip of the episode says is Stephen Grant learns that he may be a superhero, but may also share a body with a ruthless mercenary. Yeah, that that mm. alone, that's a lot. So I think that's, that's the recap of the episode. And that's and we got our stopping point. This is our our first impressions for uh, Moon Knight. Uh, is on Pitchfork with Young yes, and Panda Pair Love. Um, House of Fluid Reflections. Um, we got Bonnet. We're supposed to be on Bonnet. That's the only reason I figured we gotta put the brakes on. Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, bro. Pause. Yeah, yeah sorry bro. about Stop. that, party people. One, uh. Uh. And I flipped the script and we dipped the chip. No doubling up. It's bubbling up. Nothing troubling us from the rubble. Covering in dust. No news if it's not covering right. us. Insurance show. You can call me Zoe. Somebody say ho. Like heave ho. This is super strong. Like the green hoe. I said ho. Say ho. Like that nigga you know. 
Throw your hands up at my motherfucking show. Who is the livest? Tell me which side is. Who is the livest? Tell me which side is. Who is the livest? Zodiac, that's who I be. My style ain't free. It costs to be instrument being. What you rapping for? What's the meaning? Not to be a punchline genius. Dreaming about a community away from the scrutiny of government. I'm not your employee, I've got choices to make, consequences get eight, I can relate, I have before, no more debate, history my teacher, distractions are a feature of this society I wish to destroy, Babylon burn, bringing me joy, I need real titty meat, you can keep that soy, popcorn and peanuts, oh boy, cracker jack, white Karen, Uncle Ben, color has no bearing, scientists still exist, same soul, add the facelift, bad energy, shapeshift, I know what the devil is, he know me and that's our business.